Well, welcome back to Vegas Live with Nino. This is the greatest day of my week. Every Tuesday from 1 o'clock to 3 o'clock, I get the privilege of interviewing a lot of um, celebrities and people and business people and everybody in Las Vegas. And of course, I'm on my beautiful red couch. Um, obviously, uh, Vicky, Dr. Vicky and I got the email because we're dressed alive. <laughs> and we're down here at the Papanel, which has been here since 1972. So it's kind of absolutely wonderful. Um, I haven't been here since 1972. I don't even know if I was born then. Ah, ah. <laughs> I think a little bit before that. Um, Dr. Vicky, how are you? I am fine, and how are you? And oh, thank you so much for I the invitation. I just love you coming on um, because I had a, a show called Voices of Tomorrow, mm -hmm. which I actually interviewed children from 12 to 18. Um, I did it for 16 years. Oh. And so different schools and different everything, all the foundations with children, the schools. I knew the whole of Los Angeles School District, all the principals and everybody, because I would interview their children and everything. Yes. Now you are actually are uh, taking care of bullying. Yes, that's very uh, bullying is a major problem in the 21st century. It's definitely a major problem, but not only I. This is what I see. Not only is the bullying in the schools and with children, it's also with adults. Yes, and I think we've we don't even that. Well, we don't even know about it. We don't, we, know we don't about even it. think about you know. Think about we think about when you the bullying. We think about children. Think about but hey, what about the, the women and the men? I mean, some women do bully a man, and and, yes. uh, th and that, that does happen because we always think that the man bullies the woman, but yes. that's not necessary mm -hmm. this day and age. Yes, and also there's a lot of bullying in the workplace environment and in other really? relationships, social relationships, intimate relationships. Catherine G, yeah. party of five, your table's ready. Catherine G, party of five. I, I think we just, because we just think bullying, we think of teenagers. That's always mm -hmm. in school and yes. when a kid is sort of, doesn't quite fit in or yes. it's a little different or whatever the case may be, the mm -hmm. kid is quiet. And, John know, K, party of three, your table's so ready. John K, party of three. Of, of, um, of. Second call for Catherine G, party of five. Second call for Catherine G, party of five. One of my areas of expertise is anger, anger management. Well, that's right in today, isn't it? Yes, I mean, and everybody I is angry. Everybody is angry, and by the way, we have a right to be angry. Now, However, oh, I don't know, do we? Yes, we do have a right to be angry if we're upset or if we if there's been some injustice or if we feel someone has disrespected us, we have the right. Anger is a valid emotion. However, it's not the emotion specifically, it's how we respond to it. How we, yeah, because people are very angry with people that haven't done anything. I mean, you can be in a line waiting and you can just sort of knock somebody and say, I'm sorry, and they look at you like they want to kill you. Yes. Like, oh, I really am sorry. Yes. You know, so I don't, uh, so this anger thing is, a lot outside now. Uh, the, the anger thing is kind of all over the world. It's not just in America. Oh, it's yes. all over the world. And why are people so aggressive and so angry with people they don't know? I think it goes back to uh, our childhood and what we observed as the model for conflict. The big issue is really conflict and we are not taught how to resolve conflict. So when people become angry and when they express that inappropriately, when it's manifested in inappropriate behavior, it's mm -hmm. because we don't have the skills or the tools to deal with conflict within ourselves, internal conflict, and then of course external conflict. So I think that's So a what brings of. on the anger of a person? What what brings that on just because somebody says something and they go <laughs> Well, we, uh, in my field, we refer to them uh, as triggers. So a trigger, oh, a trigger to anger, anger could be anything. It could be a smell, it could be a person, it could be an environment, it could be an experience. And so what I like to do to deal with anger, initially, one of my other areas of expertise and interest is self-concept development. If well, we know ourselves, I've never heard of that thing. Oh. So self-concept development. development. We always have about, you know, like yourself, yes. then like others. And when I look at self-concept development, I look at six areas that were originally developed by Dr. Nana, William. Nana, party of five, your table's ready. Natalie, self, party of five. The physical self, the family self, the social self, the academic slash work self, and then the moral self. And that really comprises now, the whole person. In everything you just mentioned, you had the self in there. Yes. So you're talking about the one individual person. The one individual person. Of addressing all these different conflicts that they have out there. Yes. Do they address those 
themselves by sitting in a very quiet room, which I always say, go to your bedroom, sit on, the, uh, sit on your bed and relax and work out who you are. Yes. Is, is it better to do that, to, 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 to try to help yourself with all these conflicts that you are creating through you? I think that is an excellent strategy for dealing with yourself and understanding and focusing on the six areas of self-concept. However, I think we need to rely on uh, resources, uh, professionals such as myself, uh, parents, other family, peer group, and there are a lot of written resources that we could use in terms of self-exploration. The, the big question that I focus on with self-concept is who am I? So who am I in yeah, terms of my personal true. self, physical self, family self, social self, academic work self, and more? And how self. am I perceived in all the, in this crowd? Yes. Like we go, you go to lunch, or we both go to lunch at the Sterling Club mm -hmm. group, yes. and we do that every other Wednesday um, yes. through Bruce Very Merrin. Very fine group. Yeah, fabulous, party. Bruce Merrin, our yeah. fast uh, speakers here and all that. Roger, party fabulous. at three, your table's now, ready. Now, we all go there, and we all try to, it's a social meeting as well as a business meeting. Yes. So it's actually whatever you want it to be, actually. Yes, it is. It's, it's, it could be social. It could be friendly, it could be whatever you like. Um, Rickets, party until your table's ready. How do you ready? perceive those people so? when you see you? You watch them and you can analyze yes. them a little bit more than I can. Because this maybe. Is kind of, well, I don't know. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. Um, how do you perceive all that? The, 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 what they're trying to do and what they're trying to, where they're trying to get? Are they doing the right thing? Are they? Are they some of well, them. Well, I wouldn't necessarily say right or wrong thing, but it's interesting that we all have an impression of who we are. Yes. And we want to put our best foot forward in an environment such as the Sterling Club. And so, you see, I like the interaction and the engagement among the individuals because, especially having been to the meetings several times, because yes. the first time you're there and you meet people, that's the first impression. But after a while, you become more more comfortable with them and you get to learn a lot about them, not just from a business perspective. That is why from Dr. A Vicky is on the show because she actually got to know me. She said, oh, yeah. this lady, I could be on her show. That's she's quite, right. she's yes. okay. Yes, you are. <laughs> Well, I try to be okay. I try to help everybody, and that's and my greatest thing was to helping my younger generation because I think they're very neglected. I think we always say how terrible they are, how rude they are, and they're not. That is just what's been put into them, yes. and it's us as parents, as people. Or you don't even have to be the parent. You don't you, have to no. be the parent. I really appreciate your efforts because we, everyone, may need help and assistance, but we really need to focus on the younger generation. Oh, I'm the all for them. I have hey, kids out there. We're not kids and teenagers. I have your back, 100 percent, and I, I truly do because. Um, I just see some of them for so helpless as where to go, how to go, what to do, because no one's there to tell them or help them, and the parents are like, I don't know where they mm -hmm. are, they're in left field somewhere. And so focusing on helping children and adolescents focus on their self-concept that makes them feel better about yes. themselves, they get a better understanding of who they are, and they're better able to answer the question, who am I? Yeah. And I have just a very quick story, I was doing a show, I happened to be in Compton in Los Angeles, mm -hmm. kids were sitting on the side there, and I turned around and asked who they were and everything else and one of them said on the end she, she actually spoke to us so I went around and I said I actually spoke to you I invited them onto my show so when they came onto my show and one of them said what are we going to talk about I said we're going to talk about you and Compton and mm -hmm. that's what we did and it, and the, what they loved about it is what the, I actually Victor invited Art, them party that actually ready. followed Art, through party with it and they actually came on on set and they actually did it but they weren't sort of said well we'll do it for you and it never happened mm -hmm. and I think that's that's an example because I think that's a mistake that we all make with our younger generation we say we're going to do something for you and we never Never follow through and we don't do it and I think that's a big how can people get in touch with you doctor? you can reach me on Facebook uh, dr. Victoria D Coleman or my website is anchordoctor.com that's a n g e r d is a David R's and Richard.com or you can just google the anger doctor and my name will pop up. last call for Victor think, uh, R party of six. Yeah, absolutely amazing I Thank find you me. very calm, very relaxed, and Thank kind you. of know exactly how to handle me. <laughs> oh, you don't need to be handled. <laughs> I don't need to be. Yes. yes. <laughs> we'll be right back. Thank you so much, Thank Dr. You so much. We'll be right back, Vegas, live with Nino.